Now, we're turning this morning, please, to the book of Joshua. And we're in Joshua chapter number 5. The book of Joshua, please, in the Old Testament. And we're in chapter number 5. And coming down and beginning our reading this morning at verse number 13. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the hosts of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy, foot from off thy, loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine, into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the, the, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the re-reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then ye shall ye shout. And so the ark of the Lord come past the city, going about at once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the re-reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they come past the city once and returned unto the camp, so they did six days, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and come past the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they come past the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. Verse number 20. And so the people shouted, and when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, and so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. 
And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. Ending there, and we trust that the Lord will add us blessing to that reading from His own precious truth. It was the 10th of May, 1940, when Winston Churchill stepped into the office of Prime Minister. On the 10th of May, 1940, that was known as Britain's darkest hour. Hitler was on a rampage in May, 1940. He seemed unconquerable. He certainly seemed unstoppable. Nazi Germany sat like a tumor in the midst of Europe. From that tumor came the cancerous veil of Hitler's Nazi war machine. By May 1940, Hitler had taken over, all, over Norway. Then he took over Denmark. Then Belgium fell. Then France fell. And the British forces were to retreat in full power under this great opposition and enemy of Hitler's war machine. The British forces had to flee to the sandy beaches of Dunkirk, where they were to be met, perhaps, what they thought would have been a slaughter. In June, while the British forces were on Dunkirk beaches, King George VI called for a day of prayer. While Hitler was standing on the shore of France looking across the English Channel to take England as his next prey, King George VI, if I have said, called for a day of prayer. Westminster Abbey was to be opened. And while the people flocked into Westminster Abbey, St. Paul's Cathedral had to be opened. All the great cathedrals couldn't contain the people who came for prayer. Every church building in June of 1940 opened its doors for prayer. A miracle happened. Whatever happened, Hitler changed his mind of going for England and going for another country. But in 1940, Hitler seemed unconquerable. He seemed like one that was going to take over the world. One of his great generals said in his, in his memoir, Hitler's aim was to win battles. He thought that winning battles was what would win him the war. We know today, winning battles, powerful as he did, yet he lost the war. That same general said, Hitler refused to accept the reality that winning battles does not just guarantee of winning, winning the war. Can I take that illustration for a wee moment? And I want to bring it over to a spiritual illustration. Because when you're witnessing for people, you're out to win their souls. Two men were on the doors one day doing door-to-door -door work. And the younger man of the two got into a heavy debate with another man at the door. This man was winning, this young man was winning every argument concerning the arguments that this man was putting up. It got so heated that the older man had to come to the door. And he bid the man good day and he took the young man away. He said to the young man, young man, you can win every argument you like, but don't forget, you're not out to win arguments. You're out to win the soul. And by winning arguments, you can lose that soul. And here we come today to another battle where, where it seems it seems as if Joshua was faced with an unconquerable foe. Jericho stand 
was standing in his midst. He was commanded to go in and to claim the promised land, but Jericho stood in his way. Jericho was so fortified with its great walls and with its mighty men of valor, it stood in the way. And it seemed to Joshua, it seemed to Joshua that victory was impossible. You know, child of God today, I wonder today, are you and I living in victory? In these Christian lives today, are we living in victory? Because what saddens my heart today, and certainly saddens the Lord's heart today, how many of God's people and their Christian lives, they're living in defeat. Wonder this morning, child of God, are you living in victory? Or are you living in defeat? And here we come this morning to this great battle at Jericho. And Joshua faces this great giant battle. I wonder, is there a giant battle that you're facing at this moment? There are three things that Joshua did to win the battle. There's three things you need to do to win every battle. There's three things I need to do to win every battle. Now I want you to look at five, chapter 5, verse 13, because this is what we read. Chapter 5, verse 13. And it says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? There's three orders that Joshua followed. First of all, there was the order of observation. He lifted up his eyes and looked. There's two things Joshua saw that day he took into observation. He began to, he began to observe the visible battle. He began to see today Jericho in its greatness. It seemed an unconquerable city. It seemed to be an impossible battle. If Jericho was going to be taken, it was going to be taken by a miracle. It was going to take a miracle to defeat the city. It was going to take a miracle to overcome its powerful presence. It was going to take a miracle to defeat what was before them. I think of David as he stood before Goliath. It was going to take a miracle. As Gideon came against the Midianites, it was going to take a miracle. As the twelve spies went into the land, they soon learned it was going to take a miracle to claim the land of promise. Joshua certainly had a bottle in his hand. I wonder this morning, is there someone here and you have a battle on your hands? And your Jericho is just as real as this Jericho here. You're facing some battle this morning. And that battle threatens you. And that battle this morning seems to be against you. Listen. It could be family matters. That Jericho that you could be facing this morning could be a family matter. It could be a business matter. It could be a health matter. Listen, it may be for some people a university matter. And maybe there's a young person here this morning and you're secretly struggling concerning your Jericho. It may be the future. The future is uncertain. And today it seems to be getting you down. Maybe it's sorrow. And today 
As you look into the horizon, you see this battle. It may be nothing to the rest of us, but to you it's your Jericho. Something to do with the family? Is that your Jericho? Something to do with your business? Is that your Jericho? Something to do with your job? Is that your Jericho? The future that seems uncertain, that present, is that your Jericho this morning? Do you know what Joshua was taking into account here? He was taking into account what he was facing. He observed the visible battle. The second thing I believe he observed was the invisible war. Here's something I want to point out to you this morning. You know, for those of us who know and love the Lord, we face battles, but do you know where the real war takes place? The real war takes place in here. That's where the real war takes place. It takes place in here. We face battles. Every day there's some battle comes to us, but do you know where the real war takes place? The real war, the real war is in here. And the real war takes place in here. Do you remember Moses? When God called Moses to go and to deliver the Israelites, the Hebrews, do you know where Moses had to fight a war first in here? He says, I can't go and do it. He says, I can't go and do it. Sure, I'm slow of speech. I can't do what you're asking me to do, Lord. You think, you think of others. You think of Gideon. I, I can't go for, I'm the least in my father's house. You think of the 10 out of the 12 spies who says, we be not able to take the land this morning. Do you know something? It doesn't matter what we face in life, there's a war going in in all of us. No one escapes. Winston Churchill, when he took office on the 10th of May, 1940, he told the British Commonwealth, we have a war we must win first. If we're going to win, he says, there's one war we must win first, and that's the war within our hearts. The first war we as a nation needs to win is the war that's raging within our own hearts. We have to get, we have to win the war over defeat. We must defeat the thought of defeat. It must be surrender. It must be victory. Churchill says, if we can win the war within our own hearts, then we will see Dunkirk not as a defeat, but as a determination to go forward onto victory. You know, child of God, Churchill was right. Churchill saw the real war. The real war was not against Hitler to defeat him. The real war was going within the hearts of the British people. There was a war going on inside between optimism and pessimism. The war raged between negativity and positivity. The war raged between victory and defeat. And Churchill said, we have to win the war of our heart first of all. You know, child of God, this morning, we need to win the war that's going on within our hearts Maybe you're warring over a past failure. You know, there's people today, and they're at war with the past. And it's not going out there, it's going in here, and it's going on in there. And they can't seem to win that war. And perhaps this is you this morning. Something has happened to you in the past. You can't move forward. You can't gain victory because you have this war going on in here. You battle with temptation. Sure, we all do. If you're honest and big enough, we all battle with temptation. I know I do. And every one of us, every one of us have failure. 
But the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, God's word says this morning in 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what we want to do this morning? We want to put the past where it belongs, in the past. And let's move forward. Child of God, is this the war this morning that's raging within you? Some past failure prevents you from going on, prevents you from knowing victory in your life. Past failures. Listen, we all have failed. We all have failed. Forgetting those things, Paul says, which are behind. Forget about them. Listen, they were awful. Forget about them. But focus on what is yet to be. Focus on what you can still claim and what you can still gain. Maybe it's powerful fears. Yes, powerful fears. You know, maybe this morning you have a fear, and that's where, that's where the war is raging. Do you know, I've said this before, when I got the call to come here, I had to fight a war in here, in here. I myself had to fight a war. You don't know about it, but I'll tell you, I knew about it. I had to fight this war where one side of my brain was telling me, you can't do it. You could never do it. And then there was another side that was saying, ah, oh, but I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And I had to win the war that was being inflicted in my mind and in my heart. And listen, we all have it. You know what I find? Sometimes, child of God, we have our own ideas how to fight. Isaiah says, the Lord says, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts saith the Lord. But listen, once we win the war within, then we'll be able to fight the battle that is without. There's the order of observation, but listen, there's the order of openness in verse 13. Because this is what he says. He says, And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. There's four things we need to be open to. Number one, we need to be open to the person of God. We need to be open to the person of God. Do you, know what, do you know what Joshua believed? Do you know what he accepted? He accepted the fact that God was greater than Jericho. God was greater than this fortified city. God was greater. And child of God this morning, listen to me. Listen to me. God is greater than what you're facing. And if you want to win the war in your life, you're going to have to be open, and I'm going to have to be open to the person of God. God is greater than what you face. God is greater than what we come across. Whatever your Jericho is this morning, child of God, if you want to win that war, you're going to have to be open to the person of God. Oh, you're no friend. Whatever you're against you this morning, friend, why is to do with the family? Why is to do with your health or university or work or business or money? Whatever it is. Paul says, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who shall be against us? Oh, friend, you know, we forget this great truth. We are more than conquerors through him this morning that loved us. What about Paul's great note in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, where he says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God we're in victory this morning. The Lord Jesus is the captain of our salvation. He won the ultimate victory. He won the victory over sin. He won the victory over Satan. He won the victory this morning over death. He won the victory over grave. He won the victory over hell. Thank God Christ is the... He is the captain of our salvation. He's the captain. Friend, defeat should never come into our minds. We should be living in victory all the time, knowing that Christ... Who is the all-conquering one? He's the captain of our salvation. 
Come what may and come what must. We're in victory ground. We should be open up to the promise of God. Listen to me. Do you see in verse 13? In verse 13, that's one of the appearances of the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament. You say to me, how do I know that? Well, I'll tell you, it's very easy how you know. Any time men fell before angels, angels forbade them. But notice this time. This time, there was no forbidding. The Lord Jesus said to him, now this man said, take off, take off your sandal or your shoe. The ground you're standing on is holy ground. And if you want to notice this morning who this person was, this was one of the appearances of the Lord Jesus before he was born. You know, friend, he's our captain this morning. He's the captain of the host of the Lord. He's the one this morning that I look to. What's that we him? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth, the great things of earth, will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Oh, I'm telling you, child of God, I'm telling you, the promise, he was open to the promise of God. I'll tell you this, he was open to the power of God. He was open to the power of God. Oh, I. You know, when he was open to the plans of God, you imagine, you imagine this now. Imagine this. Imagine the Lord telling you, if you're going to defeat this city, put your swords in. Walk around that city once for six days and don't open your mouth. The only thing I want you to sound is a ram's horn. Don't you open your mouth. Keep your hands down. Walk around it for six days just once. And on the seventh day, walk around it seven times. And when the priests blow the ram's with a ram's horn and that loud noise, then you shout. You would think to yourself, my goodness me, what a way to win a battle. But he was open to the plans of God. Lord, if that's the way you want us to defeat Jericho, well, we're going to have to do it, even though it seems ludicrous, even though it seems foolish. But thirdly, most importantly, Joshua was open to obedience because he did what the Lord's commanded. Do you know why so many Christians today are living in defeat? Because they fail to obey, to live by the Word of God. Why so many believers live defeated lives is because they fail to obey the Word of God. Joshua was open to the person of God. He was open to the promises of God. Look at verse 6, chapter 6, uh, verse number, sorry, verse number 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. He was open to the promise of God. God promised him that he would give him the, he would give them the, the city. And friend, even though it seemed unconquerable, God promised that they were going to win. Are you living by the promises of God this morning? Are you open to the promises of God? Oh, friend, you know, friends, victory was was sure because he was open to the promise of God. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He was obedient. Obedient brings victory. Do you know throughout your four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's 147 commands the Lord Jesus makes. 147 commands the Lord Jesus gives. And you know something? We have to obey every one of them if we're going to know victory. And I'm going to have to obey them. And I'm pointing to myself this morning. I have to obey them if I'm going to know victory. And some of them may seem foolish and hard to do, but we have to obey them. Love your enemies. You want to know victory? Love your enemies. Do good to them that curse you. Bless them that hate you and pray for them who despitefully use you. And we're to overcome by doing good. How to win the war? How to win the war is by following the order of obedience and openness and observation. 
But here's the thing I'm going to finish with. The greatest need for facing the challenges in life is an awareness of God's presence and God's power. If we get a real sense of God's presence and power, it will affect our daily growing awareness of His power and presence in our lives and to achieve and to conquer the battle that is in front of us. Remember, what you face today, it's not your battle, it's the Lord's battle. It's the Lord's battle. See, no matter what I face today or what you face, you remember this. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. Are you ready for it? And life is worth the living just because He lives. You know, friend, that's how you win the war. That's how you overcome the enemy. That's how you know victory in your life. When you really stand upon the promises of God and obey the plans of God and know the presence of God, and if you obey the promises of God and the plans of God, and if you know the presence of God, then you will know the power of God in your life. And you'll discover no matter what we come against, victory is on the way. And whatever you're facing in life right now, child of God, if you will learn how to praise God before you see the answer, God will give you the victory. Churchill said, victory at all costs. Defeat must never enter our minds. Defeat must never enter our hearts. Victory all the way. And child of God, that's how we will win the war. Being open. Being obedient to the captain of our salvation. And let us go forth from here this morning fighting the good fight of faith. And they conquered Jericho. And they overthrew Jericho. And we'll conquer our Jericho and overthrow our Jericho if we wholly follow the Lord. God bless his word to our hearts this morning. We're going to turn to that great hymn.